Good evening. Thank you everyone for joining me. I apologize we're going live an hour later than usual. Um, I know that means that it's crazy late in parts of Europe, but hopefully still decent in USA and it actually makes it a little bit better for this part of the world being a Sunday. So how is everyone? I see we've got a lot of the usual folks in. Please send us a message and let me know where you're watching from. If this is your first time joining us, if you've got an image in the room in the, this week's competition as well. Hi to Juan, Yobo, Mr. Panther, Andrew, Sean, Philip, Jay, so many people have already said hi. So this week our theme is toys. Um, and I actually chose that theme because I just put out a video on this guy, which is the Nikon F um, nanoblock uh, model. I can't say it's a, a camera or a Lego or a, I can tell you that my camera doesn't want to focus on it. So how about I'll just put it beside my head so you can see it. Um, and it's a toy. So I thought, let's make it toys. So why not? Um, thankfully put out a call to remind people because we had all of about four entries 36 hours out but now we've got a good selection of shots entered. So thank you to everyone who has entered a shot. Now I don't normally do this but I actually wanted to know for myself and I'm still going to you know for those who are joining for the first time I always like to have a broad interpretation of the theme. I want people to be creative, so I'm not going to be like that technically doesn't quite fit the criteria and disqualify people. But just for the sake of it, I thought let's take a look at what is the definition of a toy. And quite funny that I'm now getting Lego ads pop up there. Well, now it's popped away again. Um, so something for a child to play with, something diminutive, such as a, a toy poodle something that can be toyed with. It seems weird to have the word in the definition of the word. Um, a silly preoccupation, something they say obsolete is like flirtatious or seductive behavior. Um, I guess that's like a toy boy or a, you know, that kind of a thing. To engage in flirtation, toying with someone. So I don't know if, um, and by the way, so that clearly says to all of our partners who tell us when they see we bought a new camera lens, oh, you've got a new toy, have you? That doesn't fit any of these definitions, I don't think. So whenever someone refers to your camera as a toy, make sure that you let them know that it's actually pronounced tool, not toy. Um, so anyway, there's our broad definition, but I have a feeling we're going to get quite a few macros of close-up toys amongst our entries this week. So I have two prizes that I'm going to choose out, or well, essentially the winner or winners that I choose can choose, the winners that I select can choose which of these two prizes they would like. So first of all, I have a macro course over at macgrangerphotography.com. Um, that goes through all the different aspects of getting really nice super close-ups or macros, so you could choose that one. Or I have just released, I'm gonna tell you about this in a second, a new members only library. Now I can't show you too much of this because the whole site, the, the whole page is uncensored, but essentially I can scroll to about there. Um, it is a series of eBooks, so it's going to be, it is a library and over time I'm adding more eBooks each month, which will build out and once you have access, it's basically sharing images that I've shot over the past 15 years for Art New Portraiture, but instead of just giving you a folder of images, I'm making them into eBooks, generally by individual shoots, but occasionally they may be by theme if I find a theme over the years with a little bit of a write-up, a little bit of info about what I shot on, but essentially it's all about the images. So they're high-res PDFs that you can download or look at on the site. So there's eight up there now. I just launched it a couple of days ago. Links in the description. Uh, it's kind of a tricky one figuring out how to do the pricing on something like this. Let me switch back. Having not done a subscription before, um, you know, I've never really felt comfortable with things like Patreon because 
my MO has been YouTube is free and always will be free and I want that to be available to everyone. And then if people choose to buy a course or come on a tour or a workshop with me, that's up to them. If they have the means to do that and they're interested, great, that's where the income will come in. I didn't want to be charging people, you know, 20 bucks a month just to support me when I already have a good living, it seems cheap. I know some people like art school dropouts do great things with their Patreon community and it's really, they are providing value, but often I see it's just you, you're supporting them. So here I thought this is something that really has value at, you know, 20 bucks a month. It's only 10 bucks an ebook. You get artistic inspiration and the chance to learn something from the images. I get to share a lot more images that I would have because, you know, 10 years ago when I was shooting, I wasn't shooting video as well. And I would shoot, say, half a day with a subject for a book and one shot would be used out of five locations and everything. So I have this huge archive of images. So anyway, um, at the moment, the joining fee is $20, then it's $18 a month. After this launch month, the joining fee will go up to 50. Otherwise, people would be, the you know, the incentive isn't there to stay subscribed. You would just jump in and out every now and then and grab all of the eBooks. So this way, the best deal is to join and stay joined. So, um, I hope that, I know that some of you have already picked it up. I hope you're enjoying it. And uh, I can't show you any pictures, but this on the left, this um, European model I shot with about five or six years ago in New York. The, she's the subject of the first ebook and that is actually available as a free preview. So you can just download that one to check it out and see the format of the book, see if it works for you. And then if you are interested, you can sign up and then you'll have access to all eight and you can cancel at any time. It's not one of those you have to sign up for a whole year or we pre-charge or anything like that. It's just month by month. So you'll have the choice of that or the macro course as your prize if you're one of our winners tonight. And we had some very cute shots. I haven't looked through all of them. It's um, Sunday morning here and we had guests over last night. So I just downloaded them all and I'm having a quick look now. Um, we're gonna jump straight into that. Just a reminder, if you have any questions, just send it through with hashtag ask Matt. Unfortunately, Steph couldn't be with us today. Well, actually I have to say fortunately, whilst I wish she was here, um, her and her man very rarely get holidays together and they've gone away for a week. So happy for them to be off having a romantic, hopefully relaxing time together. And it'll be just us for this weekend. So let's take a look at our first uh, shots. Um, uh -huh. I'm seeing in the chat that the link is not working. Um, it, I think he's talking about, uh, okay. Yeah, uh, so the link that Yobo has shared there, the word membership shouldn't be in it. It's just genius forward slash capital AMP library. Let me do it for you so that people have the right one. It's, um, it's all in the description though. If you're looking for any of this, it's kind of hard for me to share all of this. Um, it's in the description. Whatever we're talking about is normally always in the description. Anyway, let's take a look then at our first pictures. If you have any questions, please put them in the chat and I'll circle back. So this first one, the, the frown on the cat is kind of hilarious, right? Um, either maybe frustrated that the ball is as big as its head and it can't really do a whole lot with it. Um, very cute, I don't know for the person, the cat is probably the toy, for the cat, the ball is the toy. Um, can't really criticize the focus, the tip of the nose almost through to the eyes is in focus. With the ball though, I probably would like to see a little bit more of it in focus if you are able to do that without making the background too messy, but it's certainly a pretty shot. And what's just happened? My camera just went haywire. Hopefully you guys are still seeing me okay. Um, so this one, sorry, I missed the name on the first one. The first one was Aaron Steinberg. 
second one is Adam Anderson. So I take it back. Tiny Sony cameras are toys then, not tools. Um, so it's quite a cool shot. Um, I'd say we're going to see from, so this looks like it's had maybe two lights put on it. Um, we're going to see through some of the toy shots how difficult it actually is to get great lighting on something. So here, just the uh, the reflections being caught in the SO of Sony do make it look a little soft, but um, you know, basically if you want to get the most blur you possibly can, focus to the closest your lens will allow, get you in nice and close. I don't think there's too much distractions here. Um, but there's also not a lot to this shot. It's just a, a camera on a stump with the blurred out background. It's not a, it's not something we haven't seen before. It's a very familiar object, right? Um, so this is basically the same concept, but I'd argue the lighting is much more interesting here. One, you can get closer, this one from Adrian Aulia, um, which gives you a more bokeh out background. And the, the ripples in the cape and on the helmet and everything with the directional lighting that's been applied actually works a whole lot better. Look at the way you get the light and shadow all across the cape. If you compare it to kind of flatly lighting the camera that has no interesting curves, a shot like this, it becomes a lot more textural. So I think that overall works for, it works as a better overall image. Now, this one from David Putzia. Um, it kind of, it's quite bleak, but it also gives me the vibe I have when I see a balloon floating away in the sky. I always think somewhere out there in the distance, there's a kid crying and losing its shit at its parents because he just lost their balloon. Um, quite bleak. Uh, I think it's the vantage point. If you took a different vantage point, I think it could just look like a lost toy, but as it is, it looks kind of like a body that's been washed to shore. Um, I'm sure we could pull out some deep, meaningful metaphors about the changing of life and becoming an adult and leaving childish things behind or bunny boilers or something like that. But the main takeaway I have is bleak. And we could talk about waste and environmental impact of non-recyclable toys and blah, 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 blah. Um, I'm sorry, that last shot was, yes, David Putzia. Our next shot is Diane Wood. <sighs> very, very, very cute little munchkin. Um, and babies like cats will make anything into a toy. So yes, these um, lids are great toys for a little one. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful shot. Um, yeah, not too much that I would suggest other than I would probably like a little bit less contrasty left to right light. Um, but it's a very, very pretty shot. Nice one, thanks for entering it. I'm going to look at one more image and then jump back to take a look at any questions you guys have, send them in. I'd love to know what you think of the recent one minute videos that I've been releasing as well. Okay, this one from Dirk Hassis, kids playing with the bubbles. This has got um, fun and games written all over until someone goes to leave the site and realizes how slippery the floor is. Um, so the interesting thing, well, what I find interesting with these kind of shots is, is trying to find moments in between the bubbles or in the bubbles that tell a story. Like if this woman were larger, she's kind of framed by the bubbles, this guy, other guy with the camera. Um, one thing I'd note, the reflections on the surface of bubbles can often trick your camera's meter. And to me, this shot is half or even a full stop underexposed of where you'd want it to be. You're nowhere near losing the highlights. I would boost it all up. 
and that is a lot of bubbles. Now let me try and fix myself because my uh, here we go. Ta-da! How am I looking, by the way? Um, I don't think my man with the master plan is here today who helped me get this streaming set up live, but I'm really happy with how it's looking, so thank you. Um, now, did we have some questions come through? Andrew Doherty says, need... What? News just came out that Nikon showed a profit in the second quarter for the first time in two years. Do you think that Nikon is back? I, the questions like that, do you think that means Nikon is back, presupposes that I think that Nikon was gone. Check my videos, check what I've said. I never got into all of that doomsday shite. It means that the websites that live off churning out 12 articles a day will now start talking about this rather than their inevitable demise. I didn't have a concern that Nikon was going to go out of business. I never spoke in that way. I'm glad that they're doing better financially. As someone who's run businesses, sometimes you do have periods where sales are low, profits are negative, Often a lot of that is more on paper than anything to actually worry about in terms of long-term sustainability of the operation. And that's like for my micro business, for something as complex as a full multinational corporation, I really can't even fathom it. I have business and economics backgrounds and I still would be just pulling things out of my ass to try and say that I know the real business situation of Nikon. So all of these, armchair experts that see a dip in profit and think that that means the company is going to collapse, I really think nine out of 10 of them have absolutely no idea what they're talking about. However, glad to see that they're doing better in terms of profitability. Um, Carl Wolf asks, and thank you for noticing this. So he said, only the Hong Kong video showed up as a YouTube shorts video. The other two showed up as regular videos. Wonder why that happened. So I'm just experimenting with this. And by the way, I will be doing exactly the same amount of content, hopefully better content for YouTube in terms of long form content. I'm just planning to do some short stuff as well. People do like bite-sized content. So if you're interested in that, and they will be vertical, so if you hate vertical, just skip them. The other content will still be there, no harm, no foul. But for example, if I do a video talking about, this isn't it, but the Nikon ZFC, and it's 20 minutes long with shooting, testing, fun, this and that, and then some takeaways, to be able to pull out some 30 second, one minute, this was my thoughts on the ISO, this was my thoughts on the autofocus, here's some funny outtakes with the model and have them as standalone shorts, I think is valuable for someone who doesn't want to dip into the whole video. To answer your question, uh, YouTube does something funny where they just add a couple of seconds on. So the videos that I uploaded were 58, 59 seconds long, but once YouTube had processed them, they showed up as one minute and one second, so they weren't considered shorts. The last one I uploaded was 57 or 58, and once it processed, it came through at one minute, so it did go up as a short, but that's the only reason why. So it just means I need to aim for like 55 seconds to make sure that it does actually get into that section of YouTube where people will see it if they're particularly interested in short stuff. Um, and I have to agree, Kyle, for the longest time I have been reluctant to film, you know, in portrait mode, vertical mode, um, when YouTube stories and you, uh, Facebook, sorry, when Facebook stories and live and all of that came out, I was always saying, oh, please turn your phone to the side. But the reality is, that's the orientation of phones. A lot of people are viewing on their phones. So that's another good point. So when you're commuting or whatever, to see a couple of little highlights from a video on your phone, and then if it piques your interest, when you get home to your desktop, which is horizontal format, you can watch the long form video, which will be matching that. Um, 
Okay, Sean Vine, looks like you've had a haircut. Yes, I have. Um, Rakesh, Matt, you're looking younger. Also probably the haircut. And I haven't had a clean shave, although it's not clean now. I haven't had a fully clean shave probably for a year or two, but I went to a barber and got a haircut and a, a wet shave. And um, yes, it looked like it took a couple of years off. Um, Carolyn Vines, in my car all day and can be away from it for up to 20 minutes at a time. I am not sure what your question is, sorry. When applying the rule. Uh, Jerry Dalton, do you want to be a bit more specific what your question is there about composition? Like what's your question? What are you using? Rather uh, asking me to comment on overall rules of composition and then how that might change for different formats. Uh, it's a little broad. Ask me specifically what your question is. Um, nice to see you there, Alex Walker. Thanks for joining us. Um, so send through any more questions you have and let's jump back into some more pictures. So this one I think was Chris Dellinger. So this is a different kind of um, toys. I guess they do if you really get into paintball that you would end up buying your own guns and all of that. When I've done it in the past it was just you rocked up and rented whatever they had available. But even looking at these two guys' guns, it looks like the one on the left who's sneak attacking from behind. The canister is hidden away, maybe underneath, whereas this guy's is right on top, which might stop you getting a head wound, I'm not sure. Um, I think it's a really cool shot. The, and I actually like that the guy in the background is slightly out of focus. And it's not a huge deal for a shot like this, but I would either... If this is the only frame you have, I would actually crop it in a little bit because you've got space above and left and right. So I would crop it in on all sides so that it doesn't look accidental that you've cropped off the front guy's foot and knee. Bring it into like, uh, can I do this easily? You know, to something like that. So it really looks intentional that you were trying to have a tight crop on it or if you have other options on the frame, then I would have, or you know, just for next time, I would have not left all of that spare space. I would compose it so that you're using it by moving the frame down to catch the feet. This one from uh, KEJ, um, a lovely collection of old toys. I had or have the Olympus Trip and the Nickel Mat and maybe the Minolta. I had a couple of Pentaxes and Box Brownie and that kind of thing back in the day. The only thing I'd say is it's a nice collection, but it's not a particularly inspiring photograph. Um, it's not, the, the lighting isn't even. You've got two different colors of light. You've got reflections in there. Um, you've got, you know, it, it's just opened the doors of the cabinet and took a photo. It's, um, it's a lovely collection, but I think you could do so much more with it if you were to light it and, you know, it could be a lot more ambient and a lot more interesting. This is another one, to be honest, where it's a beautiful bike, but it's a snapshot. I think this could have been a great shot. Um, and if you had a different vantage point, slightly back, slightly up, here it's too crowded to get a shot without the other bikes. But having the three guys properly framed in the background, that's the story. This is big boys toys and they're the big boys. So having them in it rather than kind of trying to hide them behind the bike, I think is the shot. Don't crop off the wheel, step back, have the three guys there, you know, having a little bit of a pissing contest maybe about their bikes or sharing their love of two-wheel sports. Sorry, wrong way. Um, and I think that is the shot. So let's jump back, see what other questions we had. And I'm sorry, that last shot, I didn't give the author's name, was Jerry Dalton. Um, questions, questions. 
Um, Andrew Doherty says he already signed up because he wanted to support your work. Thank you for that. I'll be honest, the there is an aspect of that. I, you know, it's probably a little bit overwhelming to hear the number of messages I get per day, per week from people, and I do try my best to read them all and reply to them all, although sometimes my accounts get overfilled and then they just stop coming through for a couple of days, so if I've missed one of yours, I apologize. Um, but I get questions at least a couple of times a week about do I have a Patreon or a, an OnlyFans or something like that. Um, and I know there are people, and I am touched by it and I appreciate it, who want to have an opportunity to support it because they appreciate my videos. Occasionally I get like a PayPal donation because someone really liked a comparison video I did and it saved them some money or something. Very kind. So there is an aspect of this, this is a subscription, so in a way having a regular thing coming in will be, would be very nice and I hope that people will find value in the books and stick around. But it's also, I want to feel really confident that what I'm delivering every month is a great deal for the price. I'm not just asking for a handout. So, you know, my public and private bodies ebooks sell for I think 35 or 40 US dollars each. In this case, you're getting two ebooks a month for 18 total. So I think it's actually a good deal. Um, hi, Process from Greenwich. Hi, Jerry. Hi, Sean. Um, We are getting a few questions come here through. The light direction and bubbles make it difficult. Yes, I'm sure they did. Um, Andrew Doherty, thank you for all the questions and comments. Um, speaking of the ZFC, mine arrived yesterday, had to switch to the 16 to 50 kit as it was the only one available at the time. I actually helped Honey buy a ZFC 16 to 50 with the brown leather and the little remote, a whole big kit that she'll use for her gym stuff. Um, so who here has been watching long enough to remember educating Tina? Because we might have to do some kind of a mini version of that for Honey because being a total beginner, um, going to something that has full manual controls, it can be a little overwhelming. We probably take it for granted now, but even like knowing what the different focus modes are, you know, when she was shooting friends in a cafe, it was fine, but when she went, hiked up a mountain yesterday, the, wasn't able to get focus on the landscape, knowing which focus mode to switch to and where to find a good focus point is uh, something that you have to learn, right? So I think there'll be a video coming about how to set up your new Nikon camera and you know, a little bit of a getting started with your first manual camera content, I think we might make together. Um, let's see, let's see, um, okay, any other questions? I, sorry, I just got a little bit spaced out there. Um, let's jump back in and look at some more pictures. So, oh, there's a little Yoda and it looks like he's been stabbed in the neck with a key. Uh oh, the his voice is going to be even funnier if he's had a tracheotomy. Um, so, it's tricky. I mean, it, it works a bunch of Yodas in the, the box. I think the treatment you've put on it is a little bit funny. The out of focus areas, the highlights have gone all weird with the, the edges on them. I'm not sure what you've done to have that happen. Um, I guess one tricky thing is, um, oh, sorry, I have an alarm going in the background. One tricky thing is, sorry, Apologies. Can you please stop the alarm? Let's not, let's cancel it for Sundays. We have an alarm for 11.30 every day, which just went off. Um, I don't know, I, maybe it would be easier with a bit of a top-down 
uh, perspective on it or if you're able to find one where the face was right at the glass so we could get more of a feeling of it being trapped if there was one like pressed up against the glass I think that could be a more interesting or engaging shot um, I don't know what do you guys think in the chat uh, I get what's going on here but it just doesn't quite vibe with me um, and I forgot the the author of the last one that was J J Frendano and this one is Juan Sanchez. Well, hello there. Um, so if you guys remember the poster, this is actually really, really close. Um, I won't do you the, the disservice of putting the poster side by side because it maybe just highlights things that aren't quite right. But to be honest, it's pretty damn close. So this is cool. I it's obviously a model car and model people as well so i don't know if you actually got the people with the car or if you happen to have them and you've just built a whole um set out of it the only thing would be and i think it i mean it's good there's no distractions i don't know how tight the original shot was but this is a little tight left and right um would be maybe you know, killing the ambient even more so that whatever this is on the left has disappeared from the shot entirely. But I think that came up really well and it's instantly recognizable as one of the most famous movie posters of that area. So very cool. Um, yeah, so if you guys wanna search and check that poster, maybe I can just do it, why not? Um, it's kind of almost unfair to have it compared to the exact one. Back to the future two poster. Um, but where is the, there was a wide version, I think. Is it this one? No. Well, I know that there's a version based on that. If someone has the link to the one that it's closest to, let me know. Otherwise, let's jump back. I don't want to have you guys just follow me 30 minutes for a a, <laughs> um, a Google search little sojourn. But very cool shot. Thank you for taking the time to enter it. Here is a puppy and... And this is Karen Weissman and his, what do you think that is? A half destroyed elephant toy maybe? Um, certainly quite, uh, certainly quite, certainly quite. Again, I don't know that this works that much. I think having it a bit wider to see the paws and a bit more of the dog would be good and may, mm, I don't know, having the selective focus here quite works and the eyes of it being like chewed up is quite funny. I'm not sure, I do think it could be a little bit wider and I don't know if the forced vignette is really necessary to have it darkened down so much everywhere except for the orange. Um, let's see what we have in terms of questions again if you have one please let me know and Juan and Yobo were in the chat helping reminder if you want to check out the new uh, members only library it's got highlights from the last kind of 15 years of my professional art nude portraiture um, a lot of them are shoots that you've never seen anything from before Actually, I don't know the percentages, so I'm kind of making this up. Don't hold me to it, but let's say it's like a third things that you've never seen before at all. A third things that if you have all my books and all of that, you may have seen that person or something that we shot on that day, but not these particular images. Um, or out of the 40 or 50 images, you might have seen one or two close variations, but not the rest. And then a third may be like, uh, expanded from what I've shared. So we did something for YouTube and then we actually shot for a half a day, but the YouTube was only an hour of it. So here's more stuff from that. So there are some familiar faces from the YouTube channel over the past seven or eight years in the eBooks. 
and if you've got public and private bodies then there's familiar faces as well but there's also lots of new ones and it's also stuff that I'm shooting right now so there's already up a an ebook from a model that I actually shot in the last couple of weeks um, so let's take a look at these questions take the rule of thirds how or if what how is that modified when using a 16 by 9 ratio or using medium format info instead of full frame so as you said in the first uh, question Jerry there um, rules of composition in the sense that they're rules of thumb and not actual rules that you need to follow it's if you if the rule of thirds and putting things on the lines that are in the third of frame and the intersection of those lines works for you and you do find it appealing and puts attention where you want it you'll find that you start to shoot in that way without actually having to have the thirds on screen to help guide you to it but generally I would say the rule doesn't change and it's the same it, because if you make it a instead of a 4x5 medium format you make it a 16x9 still having your subject in a third from the edge and a third from the top is the appealing way to have it but of course it depends where the shots are being used if you have a magazine cover do I have anything suitable here um, and it's got a column of text and a picture on this side whether you have the person facing in or out or against the open or the closed side is going to make a difference so it still depends on how the images are going to be used um, uh, Sean Vine referring to Carolyn's question and your video in the desert do you have suggestions for keeping your camera gear safe if you have to leave it in a hot car I mean not particularly we were carrying most of the camera gear with us other than keeping it out of direct sunlight uh, no I don't really um, the in the desert we had most of the gear with us the stuff we didn't need was in the hotel uh, we had the air the car air conditioner and kept it in the shade where we could but that was difficult in the desert um, let me know if you guys have any other thing but no nothing jumps to mind about how to keep things safe in a hot car you don't want it super hot for long periods of time um, JF, have you considered running a Flickr group work for live where participants could upload their runner-up shots that they did not submit live? Um, I had Flickr groups in the past and I'll be honest, it was so much work to keep pushing people to try and share things there. Um, it, it kind of became uh, pointless and then I would find if I used Flickr I would have all these people complaining that we don't use Flickr anymore we use this and then what was meant to be just a simple way for us to share images became one an admin issue two a fight with people about why here it should be there that it just wasn't worth it in the end um, you know if somebody wants to make it and set it up I can include a link where people can share them but I have so much on my plate I'm not looking for yet another platform to manage that's a nice idea Jay but I just there's a limit to how many new things I can take on and I'm already doing a lot so having an extra group to moderate or look after I'm not interested in it personally um, mm -mm -mm. Uh, okay I'm kind of lost in the chat right now um, Rajesh Rakesh did you get a chance to compare the ZFC with other Z cameras specifically the Z50 I did discuss them yes check out my most recent ZFC video and I have another one coming that is a high ISO comparison of the entire Z range so that'll be out in the next uh, week or so um, okay I think that's enough let's jump back in look at the rest of the photos and see choose some winners so <laughs> 
Um, if I were going to buy a Lamborghini, it would probably be in a bright orange color like that. Um, so, it's your shot, you guys enter it, you're welcome to um, try and change my mind. But I have said, I think every time one comes up that I find spot color really tacky and it just doesn't vibe with me. And that a photo competition is not about what's in an absolute sense the best, it's all about personal taste. So if you're entering your shots to this show, in the hope of trying to win a prize or to uh, an F stoppers group where they're giving away a prize or to uh, a gallery, you know, a, a local photo club where you want to place or win a prize, knowing what the kind of aesthetic the judges look for and what tends to win and entering that kind of work is the smart move if you're looking to win rather. So, if you're looking to win and you've entered shots before and you've watched the live show before and you know that I hate spot color, either it's a tongue in cheek way of ripping me, which I'm fine with, but if you're actually in it to try and win, it's unlikely. Um, I think this is quite cool though. If you cleared out the other trash and got in a little bit, like framed it upright, I think you could make this actually look like a car wreck, you know, down the side of a ravine or something like that. Um, this one, sorry, that last one was from Macrophile. The next one is Mike Wood. Um, so I guess they're like catching worms or something. I'm not sure. It's quite cute. The only thing is I'm not sure about keeping the reflection heads in whilst cropping off mum's head in reality. Um, if you're going to do that, I might even bring it in even more again. So it's not looking accidental. So you basically got the kid at the front and then all of them at the back. But if you just crop off mum's head, I don't think mum's going to be terribly happy about that especially when you've got a little bit of space below. But I think it's a sweet shot. You can, if you're wanting to get all of the reflection in, getting yourself lower will let you get it all in a shorter frame as well. Okay, I have shot a naked lady right on that spot or one very close to that, right at sunrise with the, the IM pay glass structure in the background of the Louvre. Um, it's in my public body shot book. Is it a cover? Maybe it's not a cover. It's one of the flagship shots though. Um, I haven't actually chosen a theme for next week's uh, competition guys. So please give me your suggestions. So this shot is from Richard Wintle and I actually like it. It's, uh, it's difficult to get a clear shot here. Um, although this helps that they're so small you can get so close get rid of the other elements and blur it out so you know effectively and i think here the amount of blur you've gone for is good you wouldn't want to lose the location on a shot like this um this one from sean vine cool shot i mean you can't help the fact that the model doesn't look that real so it's a bit difficult. The, if you wanted to make this look really real I would go with um, oh, a different kind of sand, something finer because the pieces on it all look like you know golf ball sized chunks of dirt <laughs> because of the, the relative size here. Um, I think it's it's a pretty cool shot just uh, there's not it's not terribly dynamic in terms of the frame. Um, maybe try some alternate vantage points. See, we're getting some good questions come through now. So I will finish off these images and then we'll answer the rest of your questions. Um, I see Sean saying, no, Jared saying, that's how you conquer a fear. Spot color is the new spiders. The difference is I'm not afraid of spot color. <laughs> and I'm still the judge. Um, you can send them, that's fine. Thanos, Del, Thanos, we've had Thanos enter lots of times. So here's a little guy, looks like with a, 
a joint or a cigarette in next to a valve tube amp. This has great atmosphere. I think the framing's quite good. Um, not sure about the color cast, but I don't know, maybe this is referencing something in particular. Um, so yeah, cool shot. Thomas Clemens. This is very cool. Um, his hands look huge. You know what they say about that. And so do his boots, actually. He just has a tiny body and a gigantic head. Um, I like the little lights and everything in the background. Overall, nothing to dislike about this. I think this is a really nicely done one. Thank you, Thomas. And from memory, you're, you submitted this having tried to submit it once and said you didn't get an auto reply. So thank you for submitting it again. As I said, sometimes even with my commercial accounts, my email servers and everything get over full and then, you know, things happen sometimes. So um, whether, wherever the issue was, thank you for resubmitting. And that is our last image. So, um, what do you guys think out of those images? Which was your favorite and what suggestions do you have for next week's theme? I'm gonna quickly go through and choose out my winner whilst we think about it. And okay, that's a good one. Quite funny if they end up being so close. Okay, I think I have my two winners actually. And Vader was a very cool shot, but I'm actually going to go with, am I, am I, am I? Hmm. I'm gonna go with two prizes. And actually, yes, Vader will be one of them. I think that's a really nicely done shot. And even though he's a moderator, even though he's a friend, I think you'd have to agree this is a really nicely done shot. It's had a lot of effort put in, so one, you are also our winner. So both of you, please um, let me know. I'll email you uh, which of the prizes you would like. The uh, Macro 101 course or the members only library, which I can't swipe down on, but there's a link in the chat that you can check out. Now, do we have any other questions? Okay. Um, don't see any coming through here. What about here? Spot color Ferrari, that wasn't a Ferrari, Kyle. Um, okay, it looks like I've answered pretty much the uh, questions that we've had come through. Back to the future. Um, I think that's pretty much it. If you have any other ones, Alex, thank you for subscribing. Let us know what you think. Um, and as I said, those who aren't sure, you know, it's good to, you know, it's, I have, don't take any um, slight if it's not for you, that's fine. If you're not interested in nudes, it's obviously not for you. Um, and if you want to see what the kind of ebooks contain, it's a little bit of a shorter one. Some of the ebooks are like 50 pages long. I think the one I shared is only like 20, 20 or 30 um, of the European model, but it shows you basically what it is. They're very simple. It's most pages in the book are full page image, like a single image per page. It has, you know, the final page is disclaimers, the front page is a cover, then there's a page explaining the background on the shoot, and then the rest of it is all photos. So it's not a description of every photo, how we got the shots, it's a overview of the entire shoot. If I remember that I used particular lighting modifiers or whatever, or a certain little trick to get the shot in a difficult position, or, that there was a funny story on the day, I include that kind of thing. Otherwise, it's images. That's what the ebook is about. Um, so, thank you all for joining. 
Uh, Albert, yes, I am still in Hong Kong. I'm just against a background. Theme for next week. Um, what do you think? What do you think? What do you think? I should have really thought of it beforehand, but as I said, we had a late night and I'm just kind of getting on now. Um, we won't do bugs. We have done so many things lately. What are we going to do? Um, maybe I'll just announce it over at the page, although it is handy if we have it here. Um, we've done action, we've done landscape, we've done so many themes recently and I always lose track and then occasionally I'll say, okay, let's just make it this. And then it turns out we did that like three weeks ago, so I don't want to do that. Um, how about this? We'll make it, it can be any topic, but it needs to have been shot this year. Open topic, but 2021 images. There we go. Um, so enter your open topic 2021 images at mattgranger.com forward slash live. Feel free to enter spot color, feel free to lose. Um, and we'll see you all next week. Should be, <coughs> should be a fun show. Appreciate you all joining. Sorry if I've kept you up really late. And yeah, have a great rest of your weekend. I'll see you guys soon.